Hey, broken earphones. And that's why I got new earphones. What's up? And today I'm gonna do, finally, do a review of the very new album from Drake titled Scorpion. So, um, by the way, uh, this is my, um, you know, I've been pre-recording a lot of videos lately. And, uh, when I'm uploading this video, I should be in Amsterdam, Netherlands. Uh, so, uh, right now I'm still at Hong Kong, though, um, filming a review, an album review. So, Drake is a very, very famous Canadian rapper who became extremely famous during during the 2010s because of the very cutesy love pop songs that he makes very early on. And then he proceeded to make these moody fusions of R&B and rap music, which are not bad, to be honest. But then he continued to make dance hall, washed out rap music that's very bloated and very cringy and very boring. And uh, that's when his career goes downhill. And uh, probably the lowest point in his career is definitely when Pusha T released his diss track, The Story of a Dighton, which is easily one of the most destructive diss tracks ever in hip-hop history, if not the most destructive, because, like, so if you don't know the beef, um, I'm just gonna be um, simple, I'm gonna be brief. So Pusha T released Daytona, the studio album, lately, and on the last track, Infrared, Pusha T kind of talked about Drake, ghostwriting, um, like, by that I mean Drake having a ghostwriter, not him ghostwriting, okay. So, um, Pusha T accused Drake of having a ghostwriter, and then Drake responds with a duppy freestyle, where Drake responds that uh, Kanye West also has uh, ghost writers and uh, Pusha T's bad at rapping, and that's all that Drake had responsed. And then Pusha T responds saying that, you know, Drake's dad left him, saying, uh, laughing at Drake's racial identity, laughing at uh, Drake's friend's illness, saying that Drake has a secret son and has a baby mama who is a porn star. And Pusha T literally exposed all of the dirtiest and darkest and most broken secrets of Drake out in the open. And that is just truly the meanest and the most powerful diss track I've ever heard. So, uh, Drake released Scorpion, which is unexpectedly a more stripped back album. The beat is way more simple. The instrumentals are also way less layered. They are more minimalistic. And, uh, you know, simplicity may help Drake to, uh, get across some of the ideas in the lyrics, but, um, it also results in some of the most boring and drab and sluggish moments in his career so far. Because, um, although, you know, Drake is not, like, putting out another dance hall album that's cringy and bloated, but this album is almost equally bad and maybe even worse because it's just so boring and uneventful and unexciting. And uh, this album is a double album. It has two discs. And admittedly, I like disc 1 a little bit more than disc 2, but nonetheless, they are equally as uneventful and as underwhelming. So uh, the album starts off with Survival, which has these this spacey trap beat with the clicky and scattery, ex not explosive, but bursts of beats. Uh, that may sound a little intriguing at first, but then as you go into the song, it becomes very drab and dry. You know, Drake kind of talks about, you know, being successful, but also being sad in the track. And he talks about his fame as if it's, as if it's a gift from God, as if God handpicked him to be famous. And uh, that is just very egotistic, to be honest. And then we have the second track, Nonstop, which is a very boring track. It has this subtle, muddy trap beat that is extremely uneventful. Plus, lyrics-wise, it's not that great either. It's pretty generic and average. Nothing really happens on this track, except Drake trying to sound cool and sound tough, but 
really failed because of how uneventful this track is. And then we have uh, Elevate, which is also a very forgettable track, very simple track. The singing on this track is very boring. But then we have Emotionless, which is the first track on the entire album where I think um, this might be uh, just an okay album. Although at the end, this album is not okay, not really, but uh, the track Emotionless is um, not bad, it's pretty good, you know. Uh, the lyrics talks about, you know, making decisions that has heavy consequences, and uh, it also kind of talks about how toxic the music industry is. Uh, Drake kind of reminiscence his past on this track, and um, I also really like the bold and yet relaxing choir sample. The M Mariah Carey sample is also pretty nice on this track. And then we have God's Plan, which is the first single leading up to this album. The beat is extremely generic. In average, it's kind of like a pulsating, spacey, chirpy beat. And overall, it's such a boring song with an even more boring instrumental. And then uh, we have I'm Upset, which is what, uh, which is such a gross and, and disgusting song. Not that it's ridiculously awful or hideous, but it's simply because that this song is painfully boring. It's such a non-song. Like, the beat is just... Literally, almost nothing. I'm upset. Fifty thousand on my head is disrespect. And the flow, the lyrics on this track is subpar. It almost sounds like Drake is talking on this track. And uh, in the full picture, the lyrics literally means nothing on this track. So it's such a non-song. I have no idea why this is a single. Uh, and then um, there are also a few tracks that I kind of like, such as a 8 out of 10, which has another great sample, instrumental, <clears throat> similar to the sample and emotionless, except it's even more, I guess, on point and eventful. I kind of like it. And I also kind of like the track Sandra's Rose, which is pretty much a tribute to Drake's past and his mother. And uh, it's a really inspirational and triumphant song. Uh, although the lyrics is kind of uh, uh, kind of underwhelming, kind of underwritten, there's this one line about uh, Drake being like Charlemagne because there are black and white patches on his face because of Drake's racial identity. Like, like, like that's stupid. Okay? Uh, and then, um, and then we have Mob Ties, which is a track where Drake essentially impersonates Young Thug. But uh, the impersonation is actually dead on. It's such an on-point impersonation. <laughs> and this track overall is halfway decent. But, you know, when it comes to the, the flow, the Young Thug flow, like, this is like plagiarism to another level. Like, this is insane. <laughs> and then we have a Talk Up featuring Jay-Z, which is a pretty grimy banger. It's pretty decent. But still, in the full picture, it's pretty average. Again, like, nowadays, a lot of uh, modern rappers make these grimy bangers. Um, I mean, I've listened to enough grimy bangers. Like, this is enough. So, uh, I wasn't too excited when I listened to this. Although the bars are pretty badass, this track also sounds kind of quieter. Somehow, I don't know, I don't know why. Uh, so, um, there's that. And... Jay-Z, he's collaborating with Jay-Z for some reason, like, why? And there's a track uh, titled Can Take a Joke, which is almost as forgettable as Elevate, but actually even more forgettable. The beat is extremely subtle and boring, and, uh, you know, the hook is very weak. There is not a single strong element about this track. And again, it sounds like Drake is talking, like the flow is that weak. And this one ends off with Is There More, which is equally boring and underwhelming. And there's this one line saying, you know, like there's all these Mickey Mickey Mouse and Goofy Disney characters. And um, Drake kind of says, like on the next sentence, he kinda, he's kind of like, I'm challenged by who? Of course, you're challenged by Pusha T. Like, you, like Drake can't just pretend that he is okay with his career like he's not okay and by the way that line that line about disney characters is still such an illogical line i i, I don't get it and then we have disc two 
which has more singing, more R&B elements, and it's more boring, it's more uneventful, it's more skeletal and stripped back, so it sounds like complete oblivion. It's, uh, it starts off with Peak, which is an extremely unexciting starter track for disc 2. The instrumental is really average, the beat is extremely slow and clappy, and then uh, it's extremely awkward. Like, And this track becomes even more awkward with the ah ah ahs and the very weird beeps as if like uh, a, a machine is malfunctioning, like bzzz, kind of kind of beep, buzz. Uh, it's just such an awkward and embarrassing starter. And then we have Summer Games, which is an awful, cheap-ass synth-pop track. I don't know why the hell is in here. Why the hell is that track in here? And then we have the track Jaded, which is another boring singing song. It tries to be slow and sexy, but completely failed because simply because of how boring this track is. And then we have Nice for What. Again, the fourth track on disc 2 is another track that I think have a lot of potential. Uh, the instrumental and the beat on this track is really alive and awake. I love the the angelic vocal samples on this track as well, and it's just a very catchy and colorful banger. Everybody get your motherfucking roll on. I don't show you and she doesn't want no slow song. Had a man last year, life goes on. Haven't let the thing lose, girl, it's so long. And uh, on this track, Drake kind of compliments his listener, and uh, it's it's kind of cool. And uh, I also really like the beat switch towards the end of this track. It's um pretty creative, and then. Again, the album dives into another pit of, of boring nothing. We have a finesse, which is another boring singing song with spacey pianos that leads to nowhere. Um, and uh, there is also uh, there are also tracks like a "That's How You Feel," which has a very clippy bass. The mastering is trash. It's basically Eminem level mixing. And we have these very random Nicki Minaj live snippets, like, sprinkled in this track. It's, um, like, wh what the fuck? First of all, what the fuck? Second of all, like, Nicki Minaj's performance on this track is even more interesting than Drake himself. So, you know, that just proves how boring and underwhelming and underwritten this track is. Uh, however, there is also a track where I think... It's pretty nice, and that is Ratchet Happy Birthday. At first, I didn't really like this track, but the more I listened to it, the more I kind of enjoyed for how hilarious and goofy this track is. And I just like how sweet and awkward the pianos are. And, um, you know, Drake is trying to be playful here. He's trying his best not to be serious. Um, you know, it's your, it's your fucking birthday. It's your fucking birthday. It's your birthday, baby, it's your birthday, and who's gonna love you on your worst day, you talk? And then, of course, there are the more boring tracks on the way, such as Blue Tint, where Future's feature, Future's feature? <laughs> Future's feature is even better than Drake, but yet even more distracting than Drake's performance, so overall, Blue Tint is just uh, a bag of, 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 things it's i don't even know man i don't even know and then we have in my feelings which is a ridiculously sluggish song and we have a rap verse by drake which is recycled for many times and uh it's it's the kind of song that you listen to but you're not actually like focusing on the song you're just flickering through twitter and instagram and snapchat while you're listening to this track it's not even like a proper song <laughs> and uh i mean like drake singing is just so uneventful he's basically going up and down the same few notes like almost chain smokers level singing like why and then we have don't matter to me like gosh like he did michael jackson so wrong on this track like it features michael jackson but actually uh Drake kind of samples this vocal snippet of an old recording, this leftover recording of Michael Jackson. Oh my gosh, like Michael Jackson's vocals are pretty amazing generally, although 
his songs are not like 100% great and perfect. But on this track, Michael Jackson is constantly whimpering and going from loud to quiet. And Michael Jackson's vocals on this track is so heavily manipulated. It sounds so disembodied. It don't matter to me. The album ends off a little more solid, even though it's still a bit underwhelming. We have After Dark featuring Ty Dolla Sign. And uh, Ty Dolla Sign has a pretty good feature on this track. And uh, the groove is pretty sensual and the falsetto on this track is pretty nice. And then we have Final Fantasy, which is also one of the better tracks of the entire album. It's a more sexually explicit track and it's a little bit more playful and odd. Uh, however, there's this really weird beat switch at the end, which, uh, which is something that I can't figure out. It's just really weird. And there's this one line saying that Drake needs a glass of wine at sundown. Like, 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 who are you? Like, like, well, uh... And the album ends off with March 14, which is probably not planned to be the album ending, um, prior to the Pusha T diss. But now, after Pusha T dissed Drake, we have March 14. And this track is a very awkward and embarrassing attempt for Drake to try to connect to his son. And it just sounds so uncomfortable, and it sounds so abrupt. And and after this track, it kind of leaves me wondering, like, there are still all these accusations and allegations that Pusha T made against Drake, but Drake never really addressed them seriously on this album. So, um, March 14 is awkward than ever. More awkward than ever. So, uh, yeah, overall, it... The flow of this album is extremely inconsistent. It's very illogical. We have these colorful highs, but then we have these extremely boring lows. It, 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 the flow is just... Ugh. And then uh, it's such a slog album. It's, just, it's such a boring album. Like, the biggest weakness of this album is that uh, this album is so boring and uneventful. And it lacks focus. And the beat and the hooks on this album are mostly very weak and forgettable and uh, overall in the full picture this album is just a is almost like a wasteland it's almost like an oblivion of nothing so uh you know there are still highlights on this album but nah nah the worst is i'm upset and my favorite track is nice for what i'm giving Drake's Scorpion A4 out of 10. So, have you listened to Drake's Scorpion from 1 to 10? How much did you rate it? Like if you like it, hate if you hate it, and subscribe if you want more.